serendipity is magical. There's these moments when serendipity happens, where something unexpected happens across, the, across an unexpected place from one side of an industry to another. When I was a child, I had a picture book that had a, a purple dragon. It was a magical purple dragon, and its name was Serendipity. <laughs> and since then, I've loved this, this concept, this space of the wonderful beauty of something that happens that's completely unexpected and yet can grow into something huge and gorgeous. I work in the innovation in economy, and this happens quite a lot in this space, especially, or you want it to. There's these beautiful things that happen between a technology and a new space that hadn't had technology before, or a technology coming into a traditional business. There's this beauty, this magic, and these things that you can't really say. It's just happened because somebody happened to sit down at a conference dinner with somebody else, and now there's a project born. Right? I'm not the first person to have come up with this thought that these, these magical moments are something. There's entire uh, floor plans of innovation ecosystems, uh, coffees, the water, the water stations are, are planned around getting people to come together in unexpected ways in order to foster this sort of thing. But still, it's, it's magical, yeah? All right. I am a scientist, as I said, and a technologist. And the thing is, there's this phrase that you may have heard, which is, uh, any suitably advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So my thought as a scientist is, OK, if serendipity is magic, and we have this thing that says that technology is underlying magic in some way, maybe we can flip over serendipity and the magic of it and have a look and see if we can understand something. See if we can uh, see a way that we could have a toolkit to foster more serendipity by understanding what it looks like on the inside, understanding the inner workings. I don't know, but let's see. In any case, my, um, my PhD is on a particular science, which I've noted may give us some tools into this space. Rachel Maddow gives us a, sometimes a, a deep historical moment on her lead-in to news about current events. So this is what we're going to do here, but with science. <laughs> So buckle up. It won't be painful. There's no equations. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, this is about me showing up as a scientist, but uh, I think I've already been introduced as such, so <laughs> I assume myself proved. Good. So here is our model system. This is our, the core component of our, our self-assembly, of our self-assembly, of our science. This is a molecule called an alkane thiolate. It's a very, 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 very small. As I mentioned, uh, nobody here bites. I'm not going to do equations. Uh, in fact, this is much, much, much smaller than any teeth. All right, so here's our alkane thiolate. It has a couple of components. It's modeled here, of course, by an exclamation point, but it, it, it stands in very well. It's got a very sticky foot. It's got a long, floppy part at the top. And that's basically all, all there is to it. It's our model system. But it showed up in the land of science, and here it is. The next thing to think about with this science is that although I'm calling it self-assembly, it doesn't ha happen by yourself. It happens in a whole group. There's, an, e there's an, uh, an environment around it. There's a context, as with everyone. Every time anybody shows up, it's not just me. There's a bunch of other players. There's a context. In the case of our model system of our alkane thiolates, it really loves to stand on metal, especially gold. When it's on gold, it feels like it's got firm footing. It stands up straight and tall. It likes where it's standing. Uh, you may have seen in the pictures that I, I sent through that uh, I had been a, a hologram. So if, if, if you're a hologram, you show up with virtual feet. <laughs> I had been in weightlessness in, with NASA in space. And there, you don't need your feet at all. But the important thing here is that we've showed up. I'm here with my two feet. My model system here with its one feet uh, stuck to the ground. All right. However, as I mentioned, it's not enough to be there by yourself. Uh, this alkane thiolate can't make it by itself. It needs all of its friends. And if these friends aren't just friends. These are all actors, which are very similar. You see, the only difference is that our purple one is our main actor, only so you can tell who it was that came, with, came, came along with us through this ride. But in fact, uh, they're all quite similar. They have a similar action plan. They have similar actions to each other. And they're in a context that allows them an environment that supports the action that they want to do. These guys all want to stand with their one foot proudly on gold. Uh, but in other contexts, you can imagine this concept being uh, applied differently. So here we have our model system. We have the actor, actors who showed up. We had the importance of the environmental context 
the system in which they live, they exist. And we have the need for many, for multiple, for a density, really, of actors who are all going to contribute into this system. All right, I'm going to stop for a second because uh, although I haven't put up any equations and I told you that I wasn't going to, <laughs> you may be wondering whether I am actually a scientist with all of these hearts and exclamation points and uh, talk of love and happiness and personal happiness. So uh, I give you two points, the first of which is Pluto. Uh, Pluto, uh, in a very serious scientific mission, NASA went out to deep space and took a picture of Pluto. And when Pluto's picture came back, it has a giant heart stamped on its front. <laughs> so, so hearts are, are in science, actually. <laughs> uh, secondly, I wanted to, um, uh, to make another point, which is slightly more serious, which is that during my thesis defense, this is a personal anecdote from my, my thesis defense, where a very intense professor was asking me questions to my topic uh, around quantum. Now. The, the specific question was, why do these particles behave as they do? I, of course, answered with science and equations. As you expect, a scientist doing a thesis defense with a serious professor asking a very serious question about quantum mechanics, you answer with equations. He stopped me, and he said, right, that's all true. But the reason these particles all behave as they do is because that's how they're happiest. Yeah? There are equations in quantum mechanics, but this happiness does get to the principle of the thing. So I give you this with quantum to also say that self-assembly is a very, uh, very real science of emergent systems, but, but we can understand the thing with this understanding of the love between systems and the interaction between the particles and the floor and their environment. All right. So then back to my discussion of where serendipity fits into all this, where this magic fits in. How can I explain one with the other? I'll give you a couple of examples. First, uh, I'm taking the example, and you see at the bottom are self-assembled monolayer. So as, as we discussed, the one actor has a density of other actors. They're all not connected. Nobody has told anybody else to do anything, even though our purple guy is in the lead. In fact, it didn't instruct somebody on the other side of the screen to do anything. They all decided to because they all had the same intentions and they all had similar actions, they all had the same environment, and they all were just choosing based on their personal, local happiness. All this happiness added up into this vast tapestry of a pattern. So here in this case, I'm describing a, an example from recent history in which Emma Gonzalez showed up. If you know Emma Gonzalez, she's part of the March for Our Lives movement, a wonderful, powerful, strong voice against the topic of gun violence in the US. She has a strong voice, but that topic had been intractable to strong voices previously. And so it may not have been enough. But in this situation, the story didn't die. Her voice and the story of these people, it kept going. And they're living in this disrupted world, and something different was happening. And then a month later, in coordinated action, although Emma Gonzalez could never have asked for this, a emeritus professor from Neuchâtel showed up in Le Temps magazine with a, a discussion about this in support of these students and their, um, their work against gun violence, in support of Americans and our struggle to, to stop this, uh, this, these catastrophes. So Gemma Gonzalez could never have directed that because she would have never known that an emeritus professor in Neuchâtel, Switzerland, was interested or, or an actor. And yet when she showed up and then created this environmental structure, this structure with their friends where they, they created a way for people to interact on this topic, then all of a sudden out the other side of the screen pops up this emeritus professor from Neuchâtel who has a message and adds his voice and is an actor and, and contributes. Yeah? So there's sort of this magical thing that happened, but in fact, if you look at it, there was a structure behind it. We can maybe understand. Another example, and this one also comes up with our, our wonderful earlier speaker today. There's a woman who showed up with a powerful voice again, Dr. Blasey Ford. Uh, she showed up in the situation that Lindsay Lab had described earlier today and spoke about uh, previous violence against her. Again, she created a structure in the, in the form of the movement and the people that were listening to her and the voice that she had created a way for people to discuss past violence in a way that we hadn't before. People turned out in droves to, to admit to things that had happened to them, to discuss things. And then here, popping up on our stage in, uh, in Lausanne, is Lindsay Lab, who has this song that came out of this movement. So she's contributing, but 
Dr. Blasey Ford would have never known to ask a woman, a dance professor in Texas, to write a song on a ukulele in support of this thing. Yeah? But she created the, the structure, the environment was right, and then without any direction, these serendipitous, beautiful, magical moments happen. Yeah? Look. I don't have any interest in destroying the magic of serendipity. I've been bonded to serendipity since I was very young with my love of this purple, this purple dragon. Uh, the, my point here is to show a way or provide a toolkit where perhaps there's a way to think about using this concept of self-assembly, think about ways that we can foster more serendipity and find more magic and flip over the thing, think about it like a scientist, and find solutions to things that seem like they might actually be magic. Thank you.